Iry Damiel is a child Holocaust survivor from Poland. She's very important as a witness to um, the pain that is still experienced by those who lost family in the Holocaust. She left Poland when she was only 14, immediately after the war, and made her way over several years to Palestine, um, where she settled on a kibbutz and learnt Hebrew, but it was only when she was 70 years old that she felt that she really had to bear witness to what was still in her memory. Only very recently, we scholars have noticed their voices and we have become interested in what their voices tell us about the past, the very traumatic past, their experiences during the Second World War and in the aftermath. This is a generation that has been ignored for a number of reasons. First of all, because they were children. She shows how people that are living quite normal lives in Israel and have done quite well in life and a very happy family life still carry this terrible burden within themselves. To the children of the Holocaust, miraculously born for a second time, carried out of hell in suitcases, sacks, coffins, barrels, boxes, taken out on wheelbarrows, carts, hidden between cadavers, tossed from rushing trains, trucks, the windows of burning houses, left behind on footpaths, railway lines, the doorsteps of houses, huts, churches, monasteries, creeping from canals, hovels, barns, outhouses, out of cracks, openings, ditches, homeless, helpless, sinless, powerless, soundless, nameless. Half a century on, they turn back to their own nation. Does anyone know who I am? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Chciałam uciec natychmiast, bo jak rekwizyt stał tam rdzewiejący pociąg i cicho szumiał las. Było pięknie, szaro, spokojnie, pusto i tylko wiatr muskał ziemię, drzewa, kamienie i nas, gasząc naszą świeczkę raz po raz. A Dita powiedziała, widzisz, dobrze, że nie zdążyłaś i teraz jesteś moją starą mamą i objęła mnie mocno i zaśmiała się smutno. Mam stać? Mam stać? Tonight, we invited a fantastic poet, Irid Amil, to discuss probably one of the most important experience of 20th century, uh, the experience of Holocaust. And uh, I thought that we cannot actually think about and talk about and understand the idea of migration and idea of today's identity without this experience. This is why we have this amazing opportunity to talk about not only uh, fantastic poetry of Irid Amil, but uh, to talk about experience, this which usually slips away from, from language. But she took uh, courage to retell the story, rewrite the story of uh, Holocaust. And this, this will be the theme, the main topic of, uh, of, of this seminar. I would like to tell you a story. And as you see immediately, I do not have to polish my English because my English is Polish enough. <laughs> One day, around a year ago, I met on Facebook a young woman from the generation of my granddaughter. My name was familiar to her because I was born in Częstochowa 
And this is where she studied at the university. After we became friends on, on Facebook, she sent me an outstanding bilingual collection of her poem, poems. Since I was impressed, very impressed, I asked about her translator. She made a connection between me and her translator, Marek Kazmierski. I met, it's true, till now. <laughs> this romance has continued over a year in emails and on Facebook, and, and the fruit of this relationship you can see here today the dark uh, flashes. Since I was a child, before the Second World War, in Poland, the moment I started to read books and stories, I wanted to be a, a writer. I had never even thought of writing poetry. It was because I was born in Częstochowa, and I was deadly for worried of so-called Częstochowskie Rime, Bana, banal rhymes. And then came, came the war. I was eight years old. Finally, after six years, the war was finished. By some co coincidence, I stayed alive. As Szymborska said, one hole in the net and you slip through. I reached Israel in 1947 after two years of straying through the ruined Europe on food, trucks, trains, and boats. When I came, I soon understood that I couldn't be a writer. So I became a farmer and a fisherman in a kibbutz. The language we uh, used among us, our uh, friends, on our way to the, the so-called promised land was Polish and Yiddish. In Israel, I used to write a little for myself in Polish. Then I decided not to write or publish anything in Polish until I would be able to write it in Hebrew. Most of my married friends, whose mother tongue was either Yiddish or Polish, decided to switch completely to Hebrew so that this language would be a mother tongue of their children. The trigger for writing was my eldest granddaughter, Noah, who came to me one day with her Holocaust exam. She asked me to help her, to help her saying, you were there, grandma, weren't you? I did help her, and we got a very good grade. At that particular moment, I understood, indeed, I was there, and the time had come to write about it in Hebrew and publish it. It became my obligation to try as an eyewitness to resurrect some of the places, family members, family members, childhood friends, and everything <laughs> that I remember. So I started to write my earliest poems. First I wrote in Hebrew and then immediately in Polish. I didn't translate. I didn't translate them. I wrote them each, each time anew using the method, melody and the rhythm of both languages because I am a bilingual person. Polish is the rustling mother tongue of my childhood in which the world opened for me and then almost closed forever. This is what happens with the language and the culture. They are running and circulating in your blood for the rest of your life. Some of my poems are written as, as if through a filter of the second and sometimes even the third generation of Holocaust survivors. For example, for example how it is to live your life as a brother of your dead sister, have a name after someone who was not even aware of his name as a baby, to have at night somebody else's nightmares, or just to live in a country full of sun and to paint foreign gray and foggy landscapes. 
I didn't have to think over to or plan how to write my first poems. They simply flew by themselves. And for the end, I strongly believe that one should always stay humble, not to forget for a moment that one had survived just by a pure chance out of a mess of millions. That one is only a tool because by, by another twist of fate, he has the capability of telling what others keep quiet about. Others cannot write it. Thank you very much. So these children who were born in 1929 and beyond, all, all those children constituted a large cohort among the 5,000 Jewish children registered by the Central Committee of Polish Jews in the summer of 1945. So, of course, this figure uh, does not, is not final, as we know, it, uh, because it did not include all the child survivors who survived the war in Nazi-occupied Poland. Some of them have only recently, uh, <coughs> as adults, learned who they were. I'm now talking about the experiences of those children who have not emigrated from uh, Poland. And also, they did not include the child survivors who survived w along with their families in the Soviet Union. Nonetheless, it is clearly uh, this figure of 5,000 indicates the sheer destruction of Jewish children and youth. And we have to remember that on the eve of the Second World War, Polish Jewry was considered a youthful community, and most historians evaluate that in 1939, the number of children aged 15 years of, or younger was several hundred thousand. And these children, when we, uh, it is important to notice that in early post-war period, they have been interviewed uh, by uh, members of the historical Jewish commissions, uh, uh, people who were themselves Holocaust survivors, and they have registered their first raw memories of the Second World War and their early post-war experiences. Uh, and one of the most profound uh, statements that many of these testimonies uh, are about uh, is about the loss of childhood. I'm alone in the world. Children were not always aware of the emotional problems and mental disorders that some of them had developed as a result of drastic experiences during the war, but the adults in charge of the children and their daily care could usually detect those children suffering from emotional and mental problems. Children who were born in the 1930s who had lived on the Aryan side during the war, passing as Aryans, and thereby had not been allowed to possess any documents or family photos that might reveal their true identity, had, as a result, forgotten many aspects and details of their pre-war lives. And of course, the majority of the child survivors, as we know from various studies, have been very successful professionally, and uh, many turn into creativity and produce wonderful uh, poetry and prose. And Irit is an example of, uh, of a person uh, who turned into creativity in her experiences. You just wrote an autobiography which will be published in Polish language. Why now and why in Polish? It's very easy to write in Polish. It's, it's hard in, in, uh, in English like you say, akcja, obława, everybody knows. When you start to translate it in languages, nachon? You, you cannot. בני, לבני בחורי קראתי עוני, אבל הוא היה חולשתי. בני בחורי ככל אדם נולד, בתוך שלולית קטנה של דם, אבל לי היא הייתה ים שבו טבעו ונולדו כולם. הבת שלי, שמה של הבת שלי יהודית. אני מתה לראות אותה, 
אבל אני רציתי אותה שוודית, ולכן מהלכת ביתי בעולם ושמה דיטה בת אדם. הבת שלי היא עצמי ובשרי, וגם סבתות השתיים ואימא שלי. ביתי היא כל הנשים במשפחה שנשארו שם מעבר לים, בשמיים, באוויר ועשן. סונט אובורנקני ריבלה. על הימי איזהו קמי, מויגו שפיינטגו מיאסטה, זוויאל קונגווו נקרובת עם צ'אלה, בניה מצאווי מוואז'ווה אובורנקנה ריבלה, נפו ג'פצ'נקה, נפו נביאסטה. קוויסאווה שהוא נרוזדן תכנוגח יקצ'קה, נוצון קרנצ'ווה שבמוי רוז'וב עם פוקויקו פוקריומו, היה choć bałam się jej panicznie, nie mówiłam nikomu. Z poniewieraną sukienkę zadzierała jak praczka. Stroiła miny, mlaskała, pluła i psioczyła nieboga. Małą dłonią przechodniów za ręka wtarmosiła. Jak pies skomlała i żebrała i w śmiechu się wiła i obżerając się starymi gazetami, kleła los i boga. Ona jedyna chyba wiedziała, co się stanie z nami, bo co dzień od lat żywiła się starymi gazetami. You might have heard some rhymes there. Um, you won't hear them in the translation. Um, it's a gamble. Translations uh, always. And I felt in this particular case that maybe uh, rhymes were uh, going to not work in this language. I wanted to stress one connection, the, the town connection, because uh, Violetta was born in the same town of Częstochowa, just many years after, after the war. It's probably, it was probably a completely different town, different Częstochowa. And we met on, on, on the Facebook. On Facebook. <laughs> and uh, in Częstochowa as well, in 2000. A few years ago, I, I, I was asked to lead a poetry workshop in a school in my hometown of Częstochowa, located in the same neighborhood as the former World War II ghetto. I handed out photocopies of a poem by Irit Amir to the young student who also came from my town. The verse was about Częstochowa, metaphorically contrasted with the tragic city of Pompeii, and I asked them to write down their thoughts. It was a sunny autumn day. I look out in the window on Nadrzeczna Street, on the corner of which an old Hasidic synagogue used to be before the war. The street was now empty, a quarter of an hour passed, but when I collected the children's pages, almost all were equally blank. You always choose your daughter's artwork, uh, yes. for the front covers of your book. Her moving painting completes your creation as if your words influence each other. Does Dita fulfill the 11 commandments? Tell about us, remember us, always. I didn't tell my children about uh, the Holocaust. Uh, they had it enough in, in, at school. And uh, I always did it in a very with, with humor. If, for example, when they didn't want to eat something, so I said, we in Shoah, you would eat it? How do you leave this food? So it was not. But I think, I think that somewhere in the Pochviadomie, uh, subconsciousness, subconsciousness, I gave it, I gave it to them. Just feel it. I don't know how to explain it. She is, she is the world. I'm the colors and the figures. And I think so. together we made something. What, what really struck me about this poetry is its enormous emotional power. And I'm somebody that has no family connections at all with the Holocaust. Um, so, you know, without diminishing the origins of the poetry, I'd like to say that it's just wonderful as poetry. 
And I've tried to work out what this, in fact, depends upon. And I think it's this, it's something to do with this very, very stark and very simple language that picks on a few images which really make an impression. And at the one and the same time, they, they, they sort of respond to something or appeal to something that we all have. We all have some bad experience. We all have some trauma in our background that this somehow, in a kind of psychological mechanism, plays on by the use of the imagery. And I think this is something that maybe also as we get older, which may be something you'd like to comment on, um, becomes more obvious because somehow things come back to you later in life, yeah? What I've, I found quite stunning was how I was, how I was, I felt pain. It was as though it wasn't only described, not only playing in something that I could respond to or um, identify with, but it somehow put me into the position of the person writing, the person seeing it. Tu i tam, czasami letnią wieczorną porą, gdy lekki wiaterek od morza wieje, zapachnie na chwilę po dawnemu, a ona na miejscu truchleje i zastanawia się, czy jest wciąż nadal tamtą małą dziewczyną, co godzinami stała sama na peronie, wpatrzona w rozpędzone pociągi, zduszona tęsknotą, łzami i nadzieją, albo biegała pomiędzy wagonami, szukając na obcych twarzach tego ukochanego, wymiętoszonego uśmiechu ze starego, wyblakłego zdjęcia, który nie wróci już z żadnej podróży. Czasami letnią, wieczorną porą, gdy lekki wiaterek od morza wieje, na oka mgnienie tam jest tu, a tu jest tam. What was extremely interesting was what you said right at the end, that you have to, we have to write in a different way about the Holocaust, mm. because ultimately mm. we've heard it. I mean, we've, we've seen the mm. films, we've read the historical books, the academics lectures and, and everything, and it's only when somebody comes and does something different that people sit up and they listen. I just wanted to thank you very, very much and to say thank that, you. that there are more poems which were written by the children at the time and we have to make an effort to make them seen and heard. I would like to thank everybody and you, Ida Thank you very much for coming here. It was absolutely enormous pleasure and honor for us all to have you here uh, tonight. And can I ask you for a few words of conclusion? <laughs> what? For what? Just <laughs> Some wine and then some wine. <laughs> 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 Let's drink. Now I need a glass of wine. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming.